Okay, hello. Um, last time we talked about uh, what phenom counseling services meant. Um, we talked about Carl Rogers and the phenomenological world um, and person-centered therapy. And of course, all therapy today is person-centered. Now, along about the time that Carl Rogers was performing his therapy and uh, getting it popularized um, in the 1950s, um, a man by the name of Robert, not Robert, Albert Ellis um, was out working on um, some things we're going to talk about tonight. Today, we're going to talk about, and this is important, Okay. Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, or REBT. This is a form of cognitive behavior therapy, and it was um, created by Albert Ellis, like I said earlier, in 1955. Now, although it was created a long time ago, um, this is a very popular kind of therapy. Um, it started off just as rational therapy, and then it was uh, eventually changed to rational behavior um, therapy, and now today it's known as REBT because they include the emotions in there. Let me give you uh, back uh, a basic overview on how this works, okay? The theory behind this is that um, all of us have a certain belief system um, and a thinking process that is related to our belief system. Remember back when we were talking about the phenomenological world and um, of, of Carl Rogers, okay? Um, this is related to that because, excuse me, each one of us, each one of us, um, has our own perception of reality based on um, our experience of life. Each one of us is unique. We're individuals. We're like little snowflakes, as they say, huh? Okay? And because each one of us is created just a little bit different than the person next to us, even twins, um, we have different perceptions of how the world is. We may share some things in common. Perhaps we share religious beliefs or political beliefs or philosophical beliefs. Perhaps some of our values are shared with others. But each one of us has our own unique way of understanding and expressing whatever those values and belief systems happen to be. Let's just take a look, for example, at something that's um, close to my heart. Um, although I don't really talk that much about the, um, my own spiritual beliefs, um, let's just take a look at the... I grew up in the Catholic Church, okay? And uh, without getting into a bunch of stuff, even though each one of us may go to Mass on Sunday or get into other Catholic rituals, we have a different way of viewing each of these things and understanding them. And there can be disagreements among us. And although the Catholic Church is very much um, stuck on things like um, being a universal church so that everyone can believe in the same things, each individual person that belongs to that particular faith is going to see things or understand things a little bit different than the person sitting next to them in church. The same thing holds true for all the different religions, whether you're Buddhist or Muslim or Jewish or Lutheran or some other form of Christianity, whatever it is. When you are learning these things and these ideas and developing your values as you grow up in life, you experience them, learn them, and understand them slightly different than everybody else. And so when I'm doing therapy, I take everybody's views into consideration. 
I do the best I can not to judge anybody or to make any kind of um, conclusions about what's going on with them because I don't know what their phenomenological world is all about. I don't know what their belief systems are and I have to learn. And as I learn what they are, I try to use my creative imagination to have empathy for each individual person that comes to see me. And as I'm listening to them and building a counseling relationship and rapport with them, I start to, do, to get that understanding of what their core beliefs and values are and how they interpret those beliefs, which is all important. So the reason I brought up like religion, for example, is because it's easy for all of us that are, um, whether you're spiritual or not, um, if you have any kind of a spiritual religious background at all, you can relate to this and you can understand that not everybody thinks exactly the same way. huh? Um, so getting back to this um, rational mode of behavior therapy, REBT, uh, and how I work it um, into the therapeutic process and how most of us that um, would work this um, kind of therapy, how we would do it. Um, and again, it's based on my understanding of how it works. And the therapist next to me could have a slightly different way of understanding how it works and do things just a little bit different, very much similar but never quite 100% the same because we all have that difference of psychological um, subjective learning that takes place, a, a subjective experience of the world we live in. Okay? Um, this is going to have to be in two parts because I see I'm talking a long time about this. Um, we'll get back to these ideas in part two of my discussion and workshop on rational motive behavior therapy. Thank you.